So here we are, nearly two years since I acquired my barge boat. In this time, it has undergone a remarkable transformation. By now, it features a fully enclosed cabin on top, standing there as the crowning achievement of my boat building career. To share the process with you, let's rewind to August 2023, when I was celebrating my birthday with a cozy little boat party. Our plan was to cruise around with the boat, but unfortunately, one of the engines caught fire, forcing us to cancel the tour. Thankfully, no one was injured, and the party continued without any further disruptions. However, I had to rebuild an alternator, and we ended up renovating the entire rear compartment. By now, we've even installed my diesel generator, but that's a story for another video. Returning to shortly after my birthday, while we were still docked at the woods, I received delivery of my sandwich plates. These plates are made of 0.5mm steel with a PU core, providing excellent insulation and structural support. Upon the plate's arrival, I had to make a decision. Should we install the plates in full and then cut out the doors and windows, or should we cut them first and then install the plates? I decided for the latter option, a choice I came to regret later on. The panels we used were pre-cut to the ideal size of 2.70 meters. My original plan was to work on two panels at a time, putting one in place at first without screwing it down, marking locations for doors and windows, taking it out again, putting it on the floor, and now adding a second plate to it, then finalizing the markings on both plates and cutting the spaces using a circular saw with a metal blade. The idea was to secure both plates in place with self-drilling screws after the cutouts were finalized. However, spoiler alert, all the cutting we did initially turned out to be superfluous because I made a mistake that led us to recut almost all sides of the doors and windows. A blunder I will discuss in a future video. I aimed for precise alignment of the upper line for all the doors and windows on the side using a thread as a guide. Looking back, using a proper mason's lacing cord, which we used during the recutting process later on, would have been a smarter choice. Nevertheless, that was the technique we chose and it's how we constructed the entire cabin walls. Working with these plates proved even enjoyable at times. They're lightweight yet sturdy, easy to cut and maintain stability even after cutting. They significantly enhance the overall structure's stability and durability. Cutting the plates with a circular saw was a daunting task. Despite the saw slicing through them effortlessly, the saw would shoot out small metal splinters at such high speeds that they would penetrate the skin and cause bleeding if not properly protected. The circular saw wasn't able to cut everything through and through, so for the rest on the other side we had to use a jigsaw. Cutting these plates demanded significant electricity. On that note, I would like to introduce today's sponsor, Bezos, unveiling their latest innovation, the 600 watt Energy Stack Digital Portable Power Station. I've seen quite a few of these portable power stations in my days. This one is definitely among the better ones I've seen so far, not just in terms of build quality, the housing being made of high quality polymers in a beautifully finished assembly, but also in terms of features. For example, have a look at this. My angle grinder needs about a thousand watts to run, too much for a single 600 watt device. Here's where the name Energy Stack comes into play, because you can link up to four devices combining their power output. After hooking up the cable, I can link the devices in the Bezos app, and suddenly there's ample power to run my angle grinder. The app also allows you to monitor the device's performance among many other control features. Basis also offers a 100 watt Type-C ultra-fast charging, so you can charge up to four devices simultaneously with parallel charging.
and for unexpected power cuts, Basis comes to the rescue with a built-in emergency LED light. For more details, check the link in the description. And so, in this way, we were putting up the walls on my barge boat. And let me tell you, it was quite an adventure and required all of our energy and persistence for the better part of an entire week. In hindsight, the method I chose seems a bit complicated, as each plate had to be put in place at least twice before bolting it down, leading to minor deviations between the initial and final placements. If I were to tackle this again, I'd opt to bolt the plates down first and then cut out the doors and windows. Once the plates were fully cut and put in place, all that remained was securing them onto the steel frame with self-drilling screws. Now you've gained a good overview of how we built the walls, but there are still some missing pieces in understanding how we constructed the cabin structure. For this, we need to rewind a few months to the time when we were initially building the structure for the future cabin. So far, I've shown you how we built the basic layout for the frame that will become our cabin, including essential elements of the roof. At this point, we had a roof structure with steel bars lying at different heights. In this way, it would be impossible to attach the steel ceiling plates. To make everything leveled, we had to add another layer of steel square tubes to the gaps between the existing roof beams. This not only created a level base for the ceiling plates, but also enhanced the stability of the entire roof structure. By the way, here you see me welding in a sleeveless t-shirt. While every welder knows that exposed skin at such proximity to the welding arc will cause UV burns very quickly. A lesson I learned firsthand that day. Anyway, at this point the upper side of the roof structure was leveled, so now we can move on. We also had to add another row of curved horizontal beams, as recommended by a structural engineer. A structural engineer specializes in calculating forces on structures, determining material thickness and suggesting reinforcement locations. Adding these beams was an exhausting process and somehow the pressure of the task pushed me beyond my usual capacity and strength, allowing me to maneuver up, down and above the structure like a monkey in a tree. Nevertheless, the end result was impressive, making the effort more than worthwhile. We now have a stable roof with thoroughly welded steel beams, with every aspect meticulously calculated and confirmed by an engineer, providing peace of mind while residing within the structure. Once the welding was done, it was time for painting. Initially, we painted only the roof area so that we could install the roof plates. And so, in this way, we finished the substructure for the roof, creating a stable structure capable of supporting the weight of several people, as well as everything we plan to install on the roof. Putting up the nearly 5 meter long roof plates was quite challenging for a change, and I won't delve into it too much in this video, as there's a lot more to cover. Once the two sides were installed, it was time to tackle the front, I first had to determine the right shape for the doors and windows. I aimed to maximize window space while maintaining a visual appeal and using materials resourcefully. A massive 2 by 3 meter window, for example, would have been impractical to install. What I came up with was a design featuring two floor to ceiling doors with three horizontal windows, creating a balanced appearance both inside and out and offering a stunning view from within. The process of building the front wall was considerably different from the sides. The floor as well as the roof are curved, so we had to adjust each plate's top and bottom to ensure a proper fit. This involved a lot of maneuvering, putting the plates in and out several times, each time making small adjustments to make them fit a little better. One positive aspect was that installing the panels at the front was much easier than on the sides thanks to the ample space available in the front of the forward wall.
In this way, we were able to almost completely close up the front end of the boat. After adding markings to the doors and windows, we proceeded to cutting everything out and putting them in place. Before moving further, I want to briefly talk about the different development stages of the front wall. Initially, I placed a square tube at the bottom to serve as a doorway using a 10mm round steel piece to create a 1cm gap from the floor. After tack welding this, I added some vertical steel beams. At that point, I left a significant space between the doors, only adding some bracing as I wasn't certain about the final design. Upon receiving the wall panels, it became apparent that the initial layout was not compatible with the new design for the face of the structure. To provide sufficient strength for the three horizontal windows, I need to add horizontal beams between the two doors. This required removing the bracing, stripping the paint and preparing the steel for welding. The bottom beam was made from a thicker steel square tube and I had to weld together a thinner steel tube for the upper beam. After firmly welding everything together, and adding bracing in between the three horizontal sections. The structure was ready to receive the wall panels. On the day we installed the wall panels for the front wall, I first welded in some supports for a protruding roof, which will be added later on. Then we proceeded to install the numerous smaller and larger pieces that make up the forward wall. At this point I would like to express my gratitude to the individuals who assisted me with the installation, particularly the two gentlemen featured prominently in today's video. With friends like them, no challenge is too big and I couldn't have done it without their support. They by the way both recommended me to bolt the plates in first and then cut out the doors and windows. And so, as simple as that, we put up the walls on my barge boat, bringing us one step closer to getting this boat ready for moving in this winter.
With this in mind, I thank you for watching till the end, and I hope to see you in the next video.